welcome to Splatterlot. We invite a dozen brave-hearted young warriors to go head-to-head -head with the defiant defenders as they strive to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatterlot. Good! Will the defenders be able to keep the castle safe from the attackers, preserve their majestic kingdom? Yeah! And in the end, reign victorious. Who will tumble, who will tilt, who will teeter, and who will go splat? Hello, I'll be Dick. And I'll be Dot. And welcome to Splatternot. Yes, the high-energy medieval Splatfest, where 12 young attackers do battle over three rounds for the right to claim this Battlelot crown and the kingdom. But it will be far from easy. Let's look at those rounds in more detail. Round one will challenge all 12 attackers to cross the Splatterlot moat. It's a time trial and only the six fastest will survive. They will make it through to the stockade, but only four attackers will manage to escape. Those four will then compete in the majestic grand finale, where the winner will lay claim to that all-important crown. Each round has its own unique challenges, so the attackers need to show a wide range of skills to master this tournament. Here's round one. It's the incredible moat challenge. The round starts with the baffling barrels. Never easy. The slippery slope then leads to the terrifying rolling mace, majestic and menacing. The impossible incline is next, and if you survive that, you have the beastly battle axes to contend with. They often result in a moat dunking. The rope bridge of disaster then leads to the perilous pole vault and the finish line at the castle entrance. Of course, splatting them all the way will be the castle guards, the defenders. It's their primary aim to slow down the attackers, and they have a splat fueled range of weapons to do so. Sadly for the attackers, they um, really do seem to enjoy their work. In round one, we have the highly unpredictable weapons master, Tinkor. The scary barbarian, Scab! And finally, Splatterlot's very own armor clad scaremonger, Nitrous. You can run, but you can't. Uh, uh... Hi! Well, the defenders are all in place, so it's time to get this round underway. Here's our first attacker, Lizzie. I am waterproof! Lizzie is waterproof. That'll come in handy. And look at that, that's a very confident start. But, oh no, waterproof Lizzie is in the water. And she seems to be uh, quite happy about it. She hasn't met Scab yet. Hey, Lizzie, are you waterproof, huh? <laughs> I'm attacker-proof! No, you're not. Oh, I am not. I'm... All right, do you like to smile? Ooh. Well, Lizzie, giving as good as she gets, but that just makes Scab angry. Poodle flute. Trouble is, there's nowhere to hide apart from that moat. Lizzie's down, but her splat count is up. Lizzie, is it cold? Yes. Good! Ooh, oh, now Scab's just being mean. He's also being accurate. I think that's his third splat so far. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Say hello to Nitrous. Uh, the name is Nitrous. Oh. What are on? <laughs> well, you got to love Lizzie for standing up to those defenders. Will she be standing after this onslaught, though? Yes, she is. The defenders begin to realise Lizzie is a pretty tough contender. She's only got the perilous pole to go. Come on, Lizzie! From... I think you're supposed to go across, not down. No matter, she's finished, and in a top time of 3-3-3. What a great start to the tournament. Here's Brad. I'm going to get her done. Hang on, hang on. What is that on his face? I think we need to go back to the start of this round to see exactly how this happens. Ah, well, it looks like he was on the receiving end of quite a splat attack from Scab. Scab let off another round, and Brad received a splat on the nose. But he bravely carried on. You got some stuff on your face, like me. Maybe we can be brothers. No. No? Oh, I don't want you either. Oh, but then he was hit on the nose for a second time. How unlucky was that? Oh, I don't think Scab could have done that again if he tried. <laughs> and to round off in the day, Brad got finished off by the moat turtles. What? Only joking. <laughs> I'm on this castle! Jonathan now looking to buy the castle, but is Scab willing to sell? Are you scared? Are you scared? No, ah! oh, oh, funky chunks. Oh. And Scab's black count is going through the roof. Oh. Oh. Loud! Jonathan moves onto the mace, but he doesn't last long. Into the foo foo. He's still in Scab's firing line. Ooh, crashes. And it's another one on target. Chalk up another splat for Scab. Jonathan needs to get out of Scab's firing range. Oh, but not before another splat flicker. Well, he's been pelted from all angles. Let's give the poor old boy a moment to catch his breath. Here's our next attacker, Laurie. She's already over the mace and has made a pretty confident start to her round. Here's Laurie's battle cry. I'm going to rock this course even in the mace. Oh, yes, that's pretty confident, too, from the Catwoman. But she overshoots the incline and, oh, Betty Woodman! Running down the incline and falling into the moat. We see that a lot on this show. Yeah, feeling stinky? Here comes the 
I'm thinking. It's not exactly a feel good catchphrase, is it? Ooh, and that won't feel good either. A shoulder splash. Scab on target again. Oh, not as easy as it seems. Laurie is doing well, but can Nitra slow her down? Laurie tries to swing over, but it's not enough, and she swings back. It's a swing back splat, and down she goes. But she finishes in a great time. Jonathan is slower, but might just make the cut. I think I can do it! But will Jamie think the same after the barrels? Well, that's not too bad a start. Oh, Wednesday fortnight. He falls at the last barrel, but he nearly made it over in one go, so I think he'll be OK. Scab might make him think again. I'm Scab! Are you scared? <laughs> Scab trying everything to unsettle Jamie, but he's got to the mace. He tiptoes over, but he's losing his balance, and oh, greasy moo moo into the moat. We'll let Jamie dry himself down and come back to him later. Now it's time to welcome Clayton to the course. Yeah! On pot! You pot! On pot! I think it's safe to say that Clayton is pumped. And he's charging over those barrels. Now, apparently, he's a very good impressionist. Oh, and that was his impression of a splat. Very good. I wonder what impression he'll make on Scab. Clayton thinks he's fast. Clayton! You think you're fast? You think you're good? <laughs> yeah! Show him how good you are, Scab. This doesn't look good. Oh, and Clayton's down. Well, it looks like a straightforward four, but if we slow it down, we can see that it's yet another splat from Scab. He can't miss today. Clayton recovers well on the battle axes. Are you pumped? I'm pumped! Take that! <laughs> well, he ignores the taunting and the water cannon and only has the pole vault to go. Oh, the bum bums Unbelievably, Scab is still splatting him. This time it's below the belt, but they all count. Not as easy as it seems, is it, my boy? Clayton slides down, but he's OK. And he's over. But has he any strength left? Very few manage the pole vault in one go, but Clayton doesn't seem to want to be beaten. This could go either way. But yes, he's done it and finishes in a pumped time of 2 minutes 12. Wow, what a first half. Let's check out the leaderboard. Clayton is just ahead of Laurie and Jonathan is in the danger zone with 6 minutes 35. But it's all still to play for because we're only halfway through. Yes, the second half will be just as juicy, splooshy, splashy and splatty. And mushy. Well, that was quite a first half and a very fast one, too. Which is very important indeed. Remember, round one is a time trial. Only the six fastest are going to make it through to the stockade. We've seen the first six attackers, and with six more to come, we simply don't know who's safe. Even Clayton's scorching time of 2 minutes 12 could be in danger if the next six attackers are all super fast. Yeah, but if Scab continues in the form that he's in, even Jonathan's time of 6 minutes and 35 seconds might be a hard time to beat. Here's a reminder of what's in store for the remaining attackers. As always, the moat challenge has been a splat fair. Something that Scab will want to repeat in the second half. Even so, Clayton and Laurie are almost sure to be through. Jonathan is in the danger zone because Jamie sadly did not finish. So, uh, shall we uh, return to the course? Why not, indeed? Here's Aaron. I'm on TV! Yes, you are, now get on with it. Wait, Aaron! Aaron! Oh, no, it's the Aaron. oldest trick in the book. Scab calls his name, he looks up and loses balance. Textbook! Aaron there, running down the incline. Oh, he's nearly overbalanced. He's trying not to fall. Mm, Jaws. Oh, very scary things in the moat today. Get him, Nitrous! Scary Nitrous does her worst to force Aaron off the bridge, and he's down. It wasn't just Nitrous. I think the bridge had plenty of work to do with that splat. Yes, he got his feet tangled in the bridge, and he's down. So he's just got the pole vault to go. Will he end this round victorious? Oh, just end up where he started. Oh, dear, this is costing Aaron a lot of time. It's against the clock, this. Any day. And there he goes. Well, the pole vault slowed him down, but that's still a healthy time of 4 minutes 23. I'm furious and fast! Yes, Rachel is furious and... Oh! That was fast! Did she even get to the first barrel? That must be one of the fastest splats ever. Ah! Are you scared? Yeah. Oh, nah, nah. oh, and Scab chalks up another splat mace roll combo. That was really mean, just above the knee, and she's back into the quango. That's called Scab Splat. Well, the very brave Rachel did recover, but she couldn't qualify. Someone better get a lifeguard, because I'm about to splat. Hi, Laurent. Is that French? Yeah. I speak French. No, Scab, you speak Splat. I'm going to blast you with my uh, weapon! Oh! I wonder what French is, but oh! Je ne sais pas, parce que c'est un splat tout le long vie. He said, I don't know, but that's a splat in any language. And Scab continues where he left off in the first half. No, 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 no. Scab, who's getting away? 
Well, he got as far as the incline, but another splat for Lauren. Hey, watch out for the axe! Ooh, looks like they might need sharpening. I think he thinks he's better than you, Nitro. Laura's at the pole vault, and we all know how hard that is. So we'll eat or won't he? Come on, Laura. Yes, he's over. And that's a great time of 3 minutes 31. I guess he was better than Nitrous. Groovy. Oh, fast! Sophie, wanna go fast? You should be very scared. Because I'm scared! I'm not scared of you. Oh, I'm not scared of you. Oh, I don't believe it. It's another direct splat from Scab. It's getting hard to keep up with him. In fact, why don't we just take a moment to celebrate some of Scab's classic splats? There was, of course, the marvellous melon pelter. The French heckler. <laughs> the rousing Russian omelette. The grating cheese cutter. The plucky Pinocchio and Geppetto. I'm going to blast you with my uh, weapon. And who could forget this stupendous Splat de Triomphe. A classic collection of splats. Let's hear from the Splatmeister himself. I'm going to blow this box in! So, how will Caroline deal with Scab? Oh, that's his usual warm welcome. But she's twinkled toad and makes it over the maze. Bing! Another direct hit, but Caroline doesn't flinch. Reminds me of me when I was a girl. Where? Ooh, bum, 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 bum. Bum, she shrugs it off. Here we go, girly. <laughs> oh, and Nitrous also has no effect. Caroline is storming through this round. But Scab hasn't finished with her yet. More bum, 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 bum. And it's another splat for Scab. Uh, but nothing is stopping this girl. Will she make it over the moat? Yes, she will, and that's the fastest time today. An incredible 1 minute 45 from Caroline. Spylot, I'm going to conquer your castle! Here's our final attacker, Kiana the Conqueror. Apparently she's an excellent figure skater. Oh, potty swipe! Well, Kiana certainly skated off that last barrel. Maybe she'd prefer the moat to be frozen over. Kiana! Do you think you can take on Nitrous? Good answer! Oh. Questions and paintballs are coming in thick and fast. And Scab has broken the splat counter. Can Kiana concentrate? She's taking her time. And... Oh, Rumi. No, she loses her footing and she's down. She heads straight for the orange platform. Oh, maybe she thought it was carrot cake. Mmm, carrot cake. I will spoil your tea. Splat! <laughs> and sadly, Kiana has run out of time. Wow, what an incredible round. It's been so good, I'm going to lay an egg. Mm. Scam was possibly even more splatterific in the second half, but we also saw some amazing time. And here are the fastest six through to the next round. They are Caroline, Clayton, Laurie, Laurent, Lizzie and Aaron, the Arctic Monkeys. So how do you follow round one? With uh, round two, perhaps? I like your thinking. Uh, yes, it's the foam-filled stockade. Stand by for more splats. So we now have our fastest six. Let's have some splat stats. OK. Three attackers made it from the first half and three from the second. We also have to give Scab some credit for the most intense display of defending we have seen for some time. Back to the attackers. These six have already displayed dazzling skills in the moat challenge. They've triumphed over a host of weird and wonderful obstacles and are now one step closer to that all-important crown. Take it off. Yes, all six start from scratch in the stockade, but only four will escape. Is that it's about to become clear. To escape the stockade, the attackers begin strapped to the dizzying wheel of certain doom. They then stagger over to the ladder rungs, which slot into their ladders. Finally, they have to grab a flag before escaping up their ladders to victory. How many flags are there? Only four, which means two attackers won't survive. Cruel but exciting. <laughs> Sounds like the defenders. His toothy grin will put you in a tailspin. The name's Kook. He loves defending almost as much as himself. It's Gildar. And finally, the blue ninja. Shaden. You'll never get past us. We are fearless. <laughs> mm. So the attackers are already strapped to the wheel. Laurie's in the orange, Lizzie's in the tangerine, Clayton's in the navy blue, Lorne's in the light blue, Aaron's in the red, and Caroline's in the pink. But they're all about to become foam-coloured, courtesy of Shaden. You got a little, a little foam on you. Yeah, breakfast is served, buddy. <laughs> One more spin of the wheel, and they're off. Carolina Clayton have runs already. It's raining foam. Oh, and Laurie gets the first spat from the annihilating arm. And then Caroline joins her for a slippery trip down the wheel. Kook with a paint grenade, and that's her back splat. Now Gildo and another back splat. Clayton on the receiving end. Laurie sets the pace with her first rung and then sets off for another. Wallop! And the arm takes Aaron by surprise. 
It's a classic hit, slide, splat, triple whammy. Remember, it's not just the arm at the top of the wheel! Yes, in the stockade, you need eyes in the back of your head. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for my appearance. Oh. It's usually much better when it's not raining. Oof. Slippy enough yet? Well, Gildar might be worried about his appearance, but the attackers are now practically unrecognizable. Oh, well, I can tell you that was Caroline getting seriously splattered. Well, the arms are really packing a punch today. And they're slowing down our fastest attacker. What a flip. Clayton and Laurie's ladders are coming along, but the defenders are on guard. Oh, and Laurie is slowing by Kookaburra. The poor thing doesn't know which way to look. I suggest not looking up. What does it taste like? Is it yum? At least he's enthusiastically evil. Meanwhile, Aaron has sneaked off the wheel and grabbed himself a flag. So now he's heading for the ladder. Did the defenders just miss him? No, Kook spotted him and Aaron receives a bucket of slime. More like a shower of slime. <laughs> but Aaron won't mind. He is through. Yeah. Well done, Aaron. Hi, sweetie. Oh, Clayton's now on the receiving end of Kook's slime stick and he's not happy. Kook's as much of a handful as Scab was in round one. Turn away, Clayton, turn away. Oh, now what's he doing? Nah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to taste that. Wouldn't stop him dishing it out, though. This time he slimes Laurie. Oh, and she's so disgusted, she jumps off her ladder. But she's also dropped her wrong. Will she be able to find it? She needs to hurry because Lizzie has nearly finished her ladder. And on top of that, Laurent has just grabbed the second flag. He heads for his ladder and makes his way to the top. Laurent is through, which means only two flags remain. I'm a defender. Hey, Gilda, what do you reckon? I'm a defender. Don't dance. Just defend. Please. Oh, dear. Gildar's getting snappy. I think that's because his hair's getting frizzy. And there's Coop getting back to defending. This time he slimes Lizzie. Surely he's running out of slime by now. Hey, Gildar! The star is running. Gildar gets distracted for a moment, then remembers what he's here to do. He hoses Caroline, who now has the third flag. She's a tough cookie, but she takes a heavy splat at the bottom of the wheel. Morning! What a greeting. Caroline is slimed, but she's through to the final. So, one flag remains. Who's got it? Lizzie! But Gildar is hosing her down, back down the wheel, in fact, and it looks like she's lost her bearings. Oh, uh, where's the ladder when you need one? And she's back with us and makes her way up the ladder. But Laurie and Clayton, our two speed machines from round one, won't be making it through. We celebrate with Lizzie and commiserate with Laurie. Yes, it's been yet another splatfest in the stockade, but we now have our finalists. And for the record, they are Aaron, Laurent, Caroline and Lizzie. They now have the honour of competing in the grand finale. Which looks like this. Yes, it's all about to get very splatty indeed as they battle it out for the right to wear the crown, own the castle and rule the kingdom of Splatter. It's black time. Ah! Oh! Ah! <laughs> And that's why we call it Splatterlot. So there it is. We began with 12, and now we have just four. To the untrained eye, that may seem a little careless, but no, 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 it's all going to plan. Yeah, the Moat Challenge and the Stockade have served their purpose, allowing only the best attackers through to the final challenge. It's the combination of skills that is so important. Mm. We had some very fast attackers in round one yeah. who suffered in round two. Mm. And the defenders, they need to remember they have one simple task, and that's to stop these brave attackers from claiming the coveted Splatterlot crown. Of course, it will also help having all six defenders in the final. Kook, Shaden and Nitrous will be combining forces with Scab, Tinkor and Gildar, and together they certainly look like they mean business. And so does the course. Here's the lineup. Laura is in the top lane. Caroline and Lizzie in the middle, and Aaron is nearest to us. Here's a reminder of what it's all for, the crown of Splatterlots. And it wouldn't be a final without a weird and wonderful battle cry from the defenders. Are they even saying the same thing? They're all over the shop. It doesn't matter, cos we're off. The attackers start down the poles and land in the funky foam. I'm Kookaburra and I'll be defending this castle. <laughs> a statement of intent there from Kook. Here's Tinkor. 
Ooh, he just lets his bucket of slime do all the talking. A picture paints a thousand splats. Steve. Onto the teeters. Who's going to fall first? It's Busy Lizzie getting dizzy. Oh, Busy Lizzie. Yes, I like that one. <laughs> she disappears into the moat, and now it's Aaron's turn. He's doing well. Almost over. Almost there. No. Oh, look, it's Busy Lizzie again. What? Busy Lizzie is a plant. There's no time for gardening lessons. Aaron tries the barrier again, but slides straight off. He needs both feet planted onto the barrier before moving on, so that won't be allowed. Laurent taking the steady approach, but Caroline chooses speed and oh! She falls, but I think she's okay. Yes, it looks like she's tamed the wild teeter. Good day! How are you? I don't care! Scab's social skills still need a little work. Oh, has Caroline got the heart to tell him? I think Scab's got his heart set on other things like total destruction. Lizzie is still finding the teeters very tricky indeed. Is there a harder obstacle out there today? Now patient Laurent makes his move. The trouble is, it's the wrong move. Whoopee! Aaron now at the barrier, but what's that stuck in his helmet? I like what you've uh, done with your mask there, mate. <laughs> I think it's a paintball. Well, it's certainly not helping as he's now back in that moat. Which also means he's got to go back to the teeters. The defenders refocus on current leader Caroline. She has Kook on one side and Gildar on the other, but she's slowly easing forward. Lizzie also eases forward on the teeters, but she's down again. Actually, no, I'm not so sure she is. There's still some fight in her. Couldn't she get back up? Maybe? No? No. Wow, check out Laurel in the background. He really gets splattered and is now the filling in a barrier teeter sandwich. But he's back up. And... Yes, he's over the barrier. And so is Aaron. Caroline is nearly at the platform, but she's in the moat and gets slimed for her trouble. This final has exploded into life, and Aaron makes a late charge. Lizzie is struggling to reach the barrier, but look how close it is for the lead now. Ah, how about your little clouding out? Nitro is just making it harder for anyone to see who's in the lead. Laurel, Aaron. No, it's Caroline who's now halfway up. They're getting away! They're getting away! Aaron leaves from the platform, and he's made it, but surely it's too late. Caroline is almost there, and Lauren's got nothing more to give. And surely this is it, but Aaron is sprinting now. It's too late, though, surely. Yes, she has the crown. Caroline is our new queen. Lizzie's a true fighter, but someone needs to tell her it's over. And Gildar struggles to take defeat gracefully. Tinkor still sliming. Yeah! And Scab Summer gets up in one word. Yeah! What a final. Ooh, that was so close, but Caroline is the winner. No, Tom, no. Splatterlot is the winner. You're right, and boy, have we seen some splats in this tournament. But as you know, there can only be one splat of the day. And it came in round one, courtesy of Kiana. She lost her footing on the battle axes, then gravity did the rest. A slip, fall, thwack, splash of a splat. Yes, you really can't put a prize on a splat like that. So we haven't. Oh, sorry, Kiana, no prize. Moving on. Here's Queen Caroline's majestic story. Despite Scab's best efforts, he was the fastest over the moat. The stockade proved to be a much tougher challenge. But she made it through and just managed to hold on to claim that crown. We'll have another splat -a lot for you soon. But now we'll leave you with Queen Caroline and a flag-raising ceremony. Till next time, keep, keep splatting! splatting.